In this week's videos, we've been looking at n-gram models of language. n-grams calculate probabilities for words, for bigrams, and even entire sentences. In this video, we're going to deal with zeros in our n-gram models. We're going to give them all a little boost, and this will help us calculate the probability of sentences we have never seen before. And the summary of the problem is this, too many zeros. This is the table that we had from our textbook from Jurafsky and Martin 2020 and from the previous video. We were looking at examples of sentences in a system that would recommend restaurants. So we had a corpus of about 9,000 sentences where users asked questions like, I want to eat Chinese food, and then the system would come up with some recommendation. Within those 9,000 sentences, we counted the occurrences of bigrams. So, for example, the sequence I want happens 827 times, and the sequence I eat happens 9 times. And there are sequences that never happen in those 9,000 sentences, such as I food or I lunch. Uh, they never happen, and for good reason. It would be a very strange thing to say in the English language, I food, I lunch. When we calculate the probability for those, because uh, the count is zero, the probability for that sequence is also going to be zero. So the model will correctly predict that there are some sentences like I want to eat that are good English sentences. And it will, it will also correctly predict that there are sentences like I food that are bad English sentences. However, there's other structures that the system has simply never seen. For example, uh, the sequence to want food. To want food is a perfectly fine English phrase, but this system has never seen it in its 9,000 sentences. If you look at the combination to want, there's zero instances of the sequence to want. Because there's zero of those, the multiplication, uh, the probability is going to be chained, and ultimately the probability is going to be zero because the count for uh, to want was zero. But to want food is a perfectly fine uh, phrase in English. So how can we distinguish between these two uh, phrases that are ungrammatical and phrases that could exist but we simply haven't seen before? We're going to apply a technique called smoothing. There's many types of smoothing. This one's called Laplace smoothing, and it's simply add one to every single bigram. So for every number that you have in this table, add a 1, which you have here. Now, this is a new table where everything has plus 1 to it. Every cell has a plus 1. This is going to change things. For example, now we're going to have new totals for the total of bigrams. And when we get the probabilities, the, the probabilities that we had before are going to be a little bit smaller. Uh, because these new ones are stealing some of the probability for themselves from the combinations that already existed. We call this probability mass. And so these new uh, fictitious examples are extracting some probability mass from the ones we had seen before. But this is okay. With the new uh, counts, we calculate new probabilities. And now there's nothing that is probability equals zero. So we have a bunch of fictitious combinations like to want, um, I to, I food, where the probability is not zero and we're gonna pretend like we've seen it just once. This is gonna be very useful because it would allow us to differentiate between three types of sentences. Sentences that are good and that we do see in the corpus, such as I want food. Sentences that are good, but that we don't see in the corpus, such as to want food. And sentences that are ungrammatical in English and that we shouldn't admit in our model, such as I to food lunch. Without smoothing, the probability of the first one is 0 0.002145, which is fine. But the probability for the second and third one is the same. It's zero because there's some combination that the system has never seen before. To want 
or to food. And uh, the, the Engram model as is cannot distinguish between these two types of sentences, between sentences that are possible but unseen and sentences that are ungrammatical. With smoothing, you can have a distinction. So with the smooth probabilities, you have I want food, that's 000609. You have to want food, which is the multiplication of the new probabilities. It's something that is uh, three orders of magnitude smaller, 0 0.000000754, but it is a probability that exists. The third type of sentence, the one that is ungrammatical, has that multiplication and it is a lot of zeros, 2535. Five. So this new n-gram model correctly captures the intuition that there are sentences that we have seen before and are common, followed by sentences that we've never seen before but are but could exist, and sentences that are very unlikely because there's they're ungrammatical or there's something wrong with them according to the structure of English in this case. Again, this is very desirable because as we've seen in the last few weeks, there's many sentences that are possible, but that people have just never said before. There's sentences like colorless green ideas sleep furiously that are perfectly good English, even if their meaning is difficult to understand. And there's sentences of English that are fine, but it's just no one has thought of them yet. For example, I'd like to order one large sofa chair with extra chair, please which again is perfectly possible. It would just be very difficult to find before the show had been on the air. On the air. A sentence like, I'd like to order one large phone with extra phones, please, would be another example of something that is fine, but that we would have never seen before if we were modeling from previous corpora of English. Smoothing is also mathematically desirable because it allows us to turn multiplications into additions. So in our table with before smoothing, we had some probabilities that were equal to zero. And if we wanted to get something like the logarithm of zero, uh, this number would not exist. It would approach minus infinity, but it would not exist. So um, log of zero, log base of zero cannot be used. But if we have log 10 of some other number, this number would exist. And we can use those logged uh, probabilities to simplify our calculations. As you can see here, uh, logarithms of, ver of even very small probabilities are going to be relatively simple to express in, um, for example, floating point. They're, they're not going to have as many decimals. We can take the th the three multiplications of probabilities and express them as additions of logarithms, which we then exponentiate to return them to the original um, base. In doing this, we would be dealing with significantly less decimals, and we could avoid numerical underflow. We could avoid having numbers so small that the computer has a hard time processing them, and also because the numbers are simpler, these are going to be faster operations. So this is going to help us compute things um, in a faster way. So as you can see, we've been using n-gram probabilities to estimate the probability of some sentence. Good sentences have higher probabilities, ungrammatical sentences have lower probabilities, and there's many things in the middle. Sentences that no one has said before, sentences that are weird, but we can still understand, and smoothing lets us calculate the probability of those sentences. Smoothing also has desirable mathematical properties. It simplifies our calculations. In the next video, we're going to look at n-grams as generators of new sentences, and we're essentially going to be generating language.